Hello and thank you for watching. Today I want to discuss the natural habitat and behaviours of the house mouse, Mus musculus. And that's because these are the wild ancestors of our fancy or pet mice. As such, there are close similarities in their behaviour, diet and habitat. I want to discuss how wild mice meet their needs when living in and around people or further afield and how this translates to the care for our pet mice. As there's a lot to cover, I'll be splitting this into two videos. In the first video, I'll be focusing specifically on the need of rodents to gnaw, to have somewhere to hide and their ability to build a nest. And in the next video, I will focus on the diet and nutritional needs and the natural social structure of mice. I'm going to be using footage of a number of my mice while in a new cage. This will encourage their natural desire to explore. It will also allow me to highlight where you can see how I go about meeting some of their needs and I will um, point out some products that I use. They're by no means the only options but they're just what I've found that works well for me. The house mouse is an extremely adaptable animal that can be found throughout the world, often invading homes and farms. For this reason, they're often seen as pests. However, in terms of the evolution, this adaptability has meant that this species has a widespread and is almost impossible to eradicate. Although this is not ideal for us with the spread of disease and cost to agriculture, as a species, this adaptability is very beneficial to them. In and around homes and farms, mice take advantage of the opportunities for food and shelter. In homes, mice will utilise dark, tight, undisturbed spaces. So this can be in the walls, under the floor, in attics, anywhere where they feel that they can't be seen or caught. Mice will then use any objects in the environment to meet their needs. Rodents have um, open-ended incisors, and this means that they grow continuously. This allows mice to eat hard seeds and nuts without their teeth wearing out. But the downside of this method is that mice also need to gnaw on objects in the environment regularly to make sure these teeth don't overgrow and therefore impede their ability to eat. In turn, it means that when they're in the walls or attics of homes, mice will chew on almost anything, including wires, wooden beams, flooring, um, even the walls themselves, anything that they take a liking to. For our pet mice, this means we need to be providing them with the opportunity to gnaw. This can be on things like apple sticks, wooden toys, um, even wooden hides, they'll happily chew on. This is really important to think about, both for the pet mice's happiness, but also their health. In my setups, I offer a number of wooden objects, as you can see. Um, this allows them to pick and choose what they want to chew on, what has the right sort of um, texture and taste for them. And it gives them multiple opportunities um, to do so throughout the day while they are moving around. When in homes and barns, mice are also very resourceful when it comes to nesting material. Mice will build nests as somewhere warm and safe and dry where they can sleep. And they also need nests as a place to give birth and raise young. To do this, mice will utilise any kind of material that's available to them. So this could be using insulation when in attics, but also any old clothes or paper from books that are stored up there, cardboard boxes, anything that a mouse can shred into smaller pieces that in turn is soft and they can use to um, insulate themselves and any offspring. 
When house mice aren't around humans, they're going to utilise more natural objects. So this could be things like um, small gaps in trees, um, areas in shrubs and bushes. They'll use things like dried grass, leaves, feathers. They've even been known to um, pluck at sheep's wool um, to utilise to make a nest in an area that they feel safe. It's going to fulfil exactly the same purpose as the hides and beddings that we provide for our pets. So for our pet mice, it's important that we give them somewhere that is dark, dry and draft free. This is often done by providing mice with some sort of hide or house. Um, as you can see here, there's a plastic house um, in the back right hand corner and the uh, camera is actually on top of a wooden house. Both of these are going to offer the mice somewhere where they can um, feel safe and secure because it's enclosed on all sides, but also um, that's draft free so they're able to thermoregulate more effectively and somewhere that provides a good location for them to begin building a nest. So equally as important as the hides themselves are going to be the material used for their bedding. So people will often um, do this by giving mice paper-based bedding. And in terms of bedding, I mean the actual material that will be inside the places that they sleep. However, given that mice are very good at making their own nests, another option is to provide them with the materials that they need to do it themselves. So this can be things like um, toilet paper tubes, which they'll rip into pieces. Um, it could be toilet paper itself or kitchen paper, as long as they're not coloured or fragranced, um, as we need to make sure that we are keeping our mice safe from any toxins. There are also products like the pods from the kapoke tree that mice will gnaw into and use the fibres as a bedding material. Other options can include things like hay and straw, but again for pet mice we need to make sure that these are the dust extracted varieties, as mice do have very sensitive respiratory systems and can be prone to infections. Now separate to the bedding or nesting material, we also need to make sure that the mice have some sort of litter um, covering the actual ground of the cage. So obviously in the wild, mice are gonna be exposed to things like grass and, and dirt, but that tends to be a little bit harder to maintain in captivity. So a lot of people will use the um, wood shavings that you can see I'm using here in this clip. They offer um, a good cheap alternative as it's um, relatively good at absorbing urine and the odor and stopping ammonia buildup when clean regularly. And it also allows mice to um, dig and forage. And that's another quite natural behavior for mice. Another option that is quite common is to provide them with um, non-clumping paper-based litter. That can work quite well as again it's good at controlling odour. Um, however it does limit their ability to dig in it as it's a little bit heavier so I'd recommend utilising something like a dig box if that was going to be used long term. There are also other options so some people will use um, paper based bedding as um, the actual sort of litter material as well. That is certainly an option, they can dig in it. Thank you very much for watching the video. If you enjoyed this, do let me know. 
um, and subscribe so you can see part two where I'll talk about the uh, other needs of our mice. Thank you for watching.